Hi, all about IPMAT. I, uh, I want to get some information on IPMAT. And I, I went, I searched and saw different parts. And, and, and so, so, as an aspirant or a, or a parent of an aspirant, or maybe potentially parent of an aspirant, my son is not yet there, but I, I want to do some research on this and know what this exam is all about, between training and all that. And then I said, look, there's not enough information clearly to explain what are the different parts of it, which is what we're going to do. Anything and everything about this exam, we're going to break this step by step in this video. So what are we going to do? We're going to take this IPMAT indoor exam, break it down completely. So there's three sections to it. Verbal ability and reading comprehension, quantitative ability, short answer, quantitative ability, MCQ. Short answer is a kind of answer you put into a box without choices. This is multiple choice questions put in there. This is not descriptive. Right? It's not, not even, you don't have to say, uh, I step one we used to prove step two. Instead of clicking C, you will put down answer as 20. It's still objective, but it's short answer and that is multiple choice question. Right? So usually over the last two years, it has been 90 minutes for three sections, but they're, they're, they're COVID affected years. We don't know what will be there this year. What do we find in verbal? Right? So verbal, they have reading comprehension, most appropriate word or phrase rephrasing the underlying part of the sentence, fill in the blanks with this thing what inappropriate usage of words, para jumbles. Or we are pulled in three different colors. This is a reading comprehension. You don't need to know much theory. It have the ability to read, understand and answer questions. This is how do four sentences make a paragraph. This is largely common sense. These four within that the underlying part of the sentence, that part is sometimes grammar linked. This is simple reading link, this is simple logic link. The other three are vocab linked in context. So you must have a decent vocabulary and you can't just memorize a word list and get to a decent vocabulary. It has got to be something that has grown organically. They want to know, they want to have a given advantage to students who have the ability to read, understand and understand different words in different contexts. Your ability to place words in context and have a good vocabulary base is indeed crucial. So if you don't have it, then you must build it. That is something to keep in mind. So a big part of uh, the, the, the verbal section is going to be about how do words fit in context. Very, very big part. So slightly unusual, different from other uh, comparative exams. Several comparative exams are heavily reliant on reading comprehension. So they want to know whether you can read a passage and understand and answer question. That's, that generally forms 70% of the game. Here it is not like that. Words, meanings in context is the ball game. That's something to keep in mind. In quant, we put the, broadly put this into four categories. Arithmetic, algebra, geometry and number theory. Arithmetic is your percentages, profit and loss, speed, time, races, pipes and cisterns, work and time. Those kind of active topics. Algebra is inequalities, functions, uh, elements of polynomials, pairs of equations. Those. Geometry is geometry, trigonometry, coordinate geometry, mensuration. Number systems, number theory is uh, numbers, factors, factorials, reminders. Within this spot, we have permutation, combination, probability, set theory also sitting in. If you notice the big two are arithmetic and number theory. The more approachable topics are these two. Generally, the tougher topics sit here. Uh, functions, exponents, polynomials. Here we have coordinate geometry, which gets tricky. The tougher questions also come from these topics. So simple approach, get this in the bag, get this in the bag. Then think about these two. If you get this and this in the back, you're waltzing past the cutoff, and you're probably already in a place where you are close to getting a getting your contribution for your uh, overall cutoff from quant. So anyone who's preparing must prepare with an idea that I need to get this in the back, then this, then I will think about one or both of these two. And this is uh, irrespective of whether you are a uh, commerce grad or a, or a someone who's preparing for JE, therefore suitably comfortable with functions and coordinate geometry. The, uh, some candidates might be comfortable with this topic, but it still does not mean that you should get returns from this topic. The average coordinate geometry question in IPMAT is tough, but the average pipes and cisterns question is super easy. So even if you are a doin in coordinate geometry, you must find the pipes and cisterns questions, nail them, put them in the bag and then gravitate towards this. Your advantage will come if you are able to finish this in time and then do two or three questions from here. It is not going to come from proving your grade by doing these questions. You have to be savvy about this paper. It is not a JE paper. So if you are a candidate who is preparing for JE and therefore you know your polynomials, functions and coordinate geometry, you must still start from here 
go here then think about this so the the, the, the game should know what 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 your setting is in the board now the the score distribution how many questions come from each topic we put in the numbers for 2020 and 2021 2020 there are 10 questions in short answer four marks each 20 questions in mcq four marks each and 30 questions in verbal four marks each verbal and mcq are multiple choice questions which plus 4 for correct answer and minus 1 for wrong answer the short answer part is plus 4 for correct answer no negative for wrong answer this changed a little bit but yeah not dramatically this didn't change dramatically i'll tell you what changed come back to that this has remained more or less the same so 40 80 120 the exam pattern remained the same so but this is a very crucial element here we look at this and we go okay so quant and verbal are broadly equal and within that mcq is more important than short answer within quant that is not the case this is the way the exam is distributed this is not the way your scores are distributed your marks and what goes into getting a call are two wholly different things right so there is a very interesting thing called a sectional weightage which they give so what do they do they take your scores in short answer they take your scores in mcq they take your score score in brc and then create what they call as ats which is uh, uh, we have an entire video on how the ats is calculated what is going into the ats computation what sits inside it what is the mat and what is the basis for that mat but uh, i'm going to give a parallel for this suppose someone has scored 24 in this and suppose someone has scored 85 in this this 24 places you in the top 20% of people who have taken this section and likewise this score place in the top 25% then your ats score for both of these should be more or more or less the same i want to not look at absolute marks i want to look at marks as a relative idea how where do you stand and how much more than the minimum have you got vis a vis someone who scored the a's the entire paper are you closer to the maximum or the minimum among the people who have taken this exam and cleared the basic cut off where do you stand and how much value can i give for the incremental mark you have got that's what they calculate and so they they figure out a way where this 40 80 and 120 are irrelevant you get a score for this you get a score for this you get a score for this. that score is on the basis of how much you have done better than the guy who scored the minimum vis a vis the context being provided by the guy who scored the maximum the math sitting underneath ats will do exclusively we have there it is there check out the description you'll be able to see that video the, the detailed ats calculation is there in another video try that but what they are saying conceptually forget the math of it is i don't want to know how much you have scored as much as i want to know what is this vis a vis your talent pool if i am looking at 1000 candidates how much more have you scored than the worst candidate especially seen in context of what the best guy has scored that's what is happening here and then they say i'll take this this and this and plug in these weightages so 2020 the weightages of the three section 35 30 and 35 so it was almost one third one third one third so technically speaking quant weightage was two thirds plus verbal weightage was one third and within the quant the short answer and mcq have equal weightage and if anything the short answer has slightly more it's 35 and 30 so the real weightage for getting the overall ats score which is the, the number one variable for you to get a call is this not this so very often people tend to think okay 40 marks this 80 marks this 120 marks in this so clearly your verbal you're through it does not work like this you cannot say i'll clear the section cut off get 10 marks here clear the section cut off get 15 marks here and score 90 here and then i'm flying it does not work like that especially because if you see the actual scores these two are much lower than this a typical score of a candidate who clears this exam is going to be 15 in this 30 in this and 95 in this 15 plus 30 add up to 45 this is more than twice that the overall scores the chain share is going to come from here because there, there are more questions there are simpler questions the questions that you can attempt quicker and so this is your going to be your the the part where you pull in your overall marks but someone who gets 15 30 and 95 it doesn't mean you can clear these two cut offs and then fly through by nailing this section it does not work like that because they do in some form of normalizing your score in the context of what everybody else has scored the maximum and minimum and then plugging in a weightage for it and so being moderately good in all three 
will pull your score nicely compared to just clearing cutoff of those two and killing this. There is no such thing as just killing one section and clearing the cutoff of another. So keep that in mind. The weightages for the sections are these and not this. But just as we were saying, okay, one third, one third, one third, we see what where they are headed with that. They change the format. They change the weightages. The last year, 2021, they said 25% for short answer, 25% for MCQ, 50% for weightage. So here, the verbal weightage is 50%. So it's only one out of the three sections, but the score in that counts for half the weightage. We still don't know what they're going to do with 2022. We will get that information. Once we get that, we will we will figure out and we'll create a carve out a strategy. So, but the, the, it is very important to know that the weightages are not based on this. The scores are not going to be based on your overall scores. The overall cutoff is not based on your total marks. A student, to put very simply, out of this 240 marks, it is very much possible that one student has got 120, not got a call. Another student has got 105 totally and has got a call. Very much possible. How your 120 sits and how your 105 sits is very important. 120 broken into these three parts. If the line share comes from here, chances are the weightage will, will collapse. So the, the higher marks overall is not necessarily the key driver. It's not a guarantee for that. You need to have a reasonable section split, especially seen in the context of the maximum minimum, minimum and minimum. I have a wonderful video outlining how the ATS thing is calculated. Do check that out. The most important takeaway here is your weightages are these and not this. How your paper is broken up, it's not a determiner. How the weightage is provided, that is the determiner. The ATS score, that is going to be the most crucial part for getting a call or getting a seat on the interview table. That is super important. So do check out that video on ATS as well.